How's it everyone? Welcome to another chord checklist right here on Open Chord. So you got yourself a stringer and then now you can string your rackets at home. That's good. That's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run and then you guys can tinker with different string setups, different tension, and you can discover a whole different aspect to your game by trying out different types of strings. So here are five tips to help you guys on your stringing journey. You guys might know some of these already, or you guys might not. So my goal of this video is to help you guys to learn something new and to help make your stringing experience a little bit better and a little bit smoother. So tip number one, sounds pretty obvious, but a lot of people don't do this, and that is to take care of your stringer, okay? You use your stringer to string your racket, it wears out, it gets old just like anything else. You gotta take care of it, you gotta clean it. So specifically, the clamps. Okay, you guys gotta clean your clamps and your gripper because when you string, all different types of strings, nylon, polyester, natural gut, they have a coating on it. And as you grip, you clamp the strings, okay, you clamp it up tight, the strings are gonna move a little bit inside the gripper or inside the clamp and that's going to uh, wear out the coating and the coating's gonna get stuck on your clamps and your gripper and it's gonna get caked on there and it's gonna get harder to remove if it, if it stays on there for too long. If the coating stays on the clamp and you try to pull or clamp off with that clamp or gripper, it's not gonna be gripping as hard and so the string might be sliding inside the clamp. So you gotta clean your clamps, just get some alcohol swabs or something and just wipe off the clamps and the gripper periodically so it'll stay fresh and clean. Also, one more thing you should do if you guys have a lockout machine or a spring-loaded machine like the one you see here, after you're done stringing, always reset your spring to zero tension. If you do that, the spring will last longer. You won't have to get it recalibrated. If you have it kept at whatever tension you set it at, like for example, 50, it's going to constantly be compressing that spring and it's going to be wearing the spring out. So every time you guys are done stringing, zero out the spring so that it'll be in its default position and it won't have to be recalibrated. This will save you guys a lot of trouble in the long run because once the spring starts to get too compressed, it's not gonna be pulling true tension. So please take care of your stringer. Tip number two, as you guys are finishing stringing the mains, the two outer mains, I recommend raising the tension on that about two pounds. So if you guys are stringing 50 pounds throughout, the last outer two mains on both sides, just raise the tension up to about 52 pounds, pull the tension, clamp off and then tie your knot. The reason for this is that no matter how tightly you clamp off the two outer mains, once you let go of the gripper and you tie off the knot, when you unclamp it, some of that tension is going to go back into the string and it's gonna be a little bit looser. And so if you want a nice consistent tension throughout all of the main strings, raise the tension on the outer two mains a couple of pounds so that when you release the clamps after you tie off the knot, the tension will go back in and it'll be about the same tension as the rest of the mains. Tip number three, if you guys are stringing for a reel, I know a lot of guys like to measure it out different ways. I've seen people just measure out uh, 12 meters of string, or some people like to go like this with their wingspan and just pull strings however many, I don't know how they count it, but they use their wingspan to measure out the string. In my opinion, this wastes a lot of string. So the way I do it when I measure from a reel is that I count the mains and I just pull that same amount from the reel. So if it's a 16 by 19 string, I count 16 times out of the reel, plus one extra for the tie off. So I pull out about 17 racket length or racket head length worth of string. And then same thing with the crosses. If it's a 19 cross uh, racket, I measure out 20, okay, one extra for the tie off. I, in my opinion, doing it this way, instead of doing it the wingspan way or just measuring out 12 meters worth of string will save you some string in the long run. And I think you can get at least one more string job out of a reel if you just count the mains and the crosses and you measure out according to how many mains and crosses your racket has. Tip number four, most stringers think the most difficult part about stringing a racket is weaving the crosses. And so this tip, is to string one ahead before you tension the string, okay? So if you guys weave one cross, don't pull tension on that string just yet, okay? Weave one cross and then weave the other cross coming back and then pull tension on that first cross that you, you wove.
So your string should come out to be a big loop on one side. Get the loop, that's the first string, the cross that you strung, pull tension on that and then pull the rest of the string through. Before tensioning off that, weave another cross, weave one ahead and then pull the tension on the other side. The reason you want to do this is, is because if you pull the string through and you tension it off immediately and you clamp it, when you try to come through, the strings will be flat on each other because you pull the tension and so it's gonna, you're going to have to weave it more up and down which makes it a little bit difficult. If you haven't pulled tension on the strings yet, your mains will still be kind of apart so there will be a little bit more space so you can weave it through a little bit easier. Okay, so if you guys don't do this, give it a try. Just weave your crosses one ahead and then pull tension, pull the cross through and then pull it again through the other direction and then tension off the other side. You guys might be able to save more time doing your crosses if you guys do this. And lastly, tip number five. Everybody has their own favorite types of tie-off knots that they like to finish the racket with. But in my opinion, I think you guys should use either the Wilson Pro Knot or the Parnell Knot or any knot that is kind of thick, kind of big. And the reason for that is I see a lot of people stringing with a double half hitch or two half hitch. That's not a wide knot. Okay, it's a long knot. It goes this way in the direction of the string. The reason why I don't recommend using a double half hitch or a two half, half hitch knot is because on an old racket, for example, when the grommet holes start to get bigger, those types of knots, once you unclamp and you release the gripper, those knots can get sucked into the grommet hole. And if that happens and you constantly hit the strings over and over, you're putting stress on the frame and it could damage the frame if the knot goes inside the grommet and is now resting inside the frame. The Wilson Pro Knot or a Parnell Knot or a big fat starting knot that's wide like this, it'll sit flush on top of the grommet hole without going inside and so that way if you use this knot you will never have to worry about the knot getting sucked back into the grommet hole and causing damage to the inside of your frame. So if you don't know how to tie off a Wilson Pro Knot it's very simple, look up a tutorial, but I recommend using that or a Parnell knot or any type of knot that'll, that's wide and will fit sit flush on the grommet hole. So thank you for watching this open court checklist. I hope these stringing tips were useful to you. I'm sure you guys knew a lot of these, so I apologize if this is redundant or you didn't learn anything new from this. I hope though I was able to teach you guys something and help you to become a better stringer and help to make your stringing life a little bit easier. If you like this content and want to see more like it, be sure you overhead smash the like and subscribe button and I'll see you on an open court.